Hill. That's so bad. Another. He's looking for a third. Oh. He's gonna get it sir. against Kinger now in a one versus two. Once again, he finds one. He finds the second. He's still alive. Can he go in? Oh, oh my goodness. God. He's gonna go bar down and give Saints the lead again. Welcome everybody to the final week of Overwatch Collegiate Championship action here. John and Bill Bangs and I'm joined by Daniel Jobin today. St. Clair sitting at 3-3 three and three on the precipice of making it to playoffs, but they have a tough road to have them. They yeah. have a couple strong opponents here in the final week, and to make playoffs, they got to clutch up. Yeah, we saw they started off really, really good. I think they started off 2-0, and then they kind of went back and forth. They have struggled a little bit the last couple matches, so they definitely need to get back on track because... If they say they're three and three right now, a four and four record most likely will not get them into playoffs. They need a lot of things to break their way, so they're really hoping to get those two wins and move to five and three and give themselves a really good chance to move on. They have some tough opponents, so they have the Allegheny Gators here in game number one, and at two o'clock they will be playing against South Carolina. So a couple of good opponents they're going to be up against. Uh, what do you think Sinclair has to do here to try and secure themselves a spot in the playoffs? I think they need to come out and play a, a really aggressive style and come out like knowing what they want to do. Because oftentimes we see like when they get confused and they don't really know exactly what kind of push they want to make, they kind of spread out and they don't really stick to like a sort of game plan or like mm. a cohesive unit. They kind of just all do their own thing and they don't really combine their utility properly. So just stick together and put a lot of pressure right away because like, when they play off the back foot, they really struggle. Like when they just... When they're yeah. getting spawn camped and stuff, it just it gets really ugly. Yeah, I think I agree with you on that one. I think for me too, looking at them, I really want to see their uh, support step up. I think that has yeah. been something that you know. I think other than our junk on the Baptiste, they have really struggled playing a lot of the other supports. Yeah. I feel like they just they aren't allowing their other players like tanks to be as aggressive as they'd like to be. We saw how good they can be if they allow their tanks to move forward and play a more aggressive style. But when their supports are on the back line, they aren't able to dodge out from the DPS. They aren't able to stay alive. It makes things a lot more difficult. We do have the roster here. We have Cheesy and Apostle on the tanks. We have Bailable and GCLs on DPS, as well as Yubel and Arjunk. So the standard uh, overall team that we've come to see throughout the last semester. And I think specifically want to highlight anyone here. It is going to be GCLs. I think he has looked really good on his transition from yeah. tank over to DPS and he's really gonna have to step up here because like you said three and three right now they have to try and win these games to secure themselves a playoff spot yeah and I think that was a really really good point about the support having to kind of bolster the the tanks and everything because we've seen Apostle has had some crazy pop-off moments especially mm -hmm. when he's been the one initiating the aggression and we've seen those Reinhardt and those hamster ball dives have proved yeah. absolutely vital for St. Clair so to keep him strong and keep him alive and keep him in the fight as long as possible I think that's what St. Clair has to do to win yeah, I totally agree with that one. And like I said many times before, I think his Reinhardt could be the difference maker yeah. in these series. I think if he can step up on that character, it'll make such a huge difference. Um, it has It's funny watching how the Overwatch meta has worked throughout the last year because yeah. we saw obviously when back when Goats was a thing, it was very <laughs> stock standard. And even after that, I felt like people really liked the Ryan Zarya combo. I yeah. think um, now that we are where Overwatch, we're a place now where Overwatch is, you know, you can play a lot of different comps, a lot of different heroes. And it's been pretty balanced overall. We've seen such a big diversity yeah. of hero selections throughout this whole season um, in Overwatch Collegiate Championship. So it'll be interesting to see what teams go for on these specific maps, on these specific heroes. And we'll see if it'll make a big difference in the results. Yeah, it is crazy. Week to week, we have seen such a vastly different comp, both mm -hmm. from St. Clair and their opponents. So that can work work in your favor and out of your favor because you can keep things interesting and you can bring new ideas and fresh strategies but at the same time you do want some continuity and you do want to know exactly what your team's going to go do going into it so you want to have some you know level of consistency where like everyone knows the place they have to be and what they have to do at the right time yeah i think and we do have our map choices here so map number one is going to be elios elios i really it is honestly like i'd say one of my favorite maps in all of overwatch yeah. because you have so much potential with characters that normally you don't see as often like the roadhog like the Lucio, like the Wrecking Ball, because a lot of these maps allow you to push people off the edge, right? You have so much ex uh, exposed stuff around these control points. Uh, you have the well, which has the giant hole in the middle, and you have, um, I forget what the I, the long one is that has the Widowmaker. Yeah. But there is that one specific one that has the Widowmaker possibility as well. So it'll be, I really like Ilios because it shows such a diversity of different yeah. possibilities within heroes so i'm really looking forward to that i've been hooked into that well so many times as soon as oh. you, as soon as i heard the word oh, ilios i had ptsd from just it's, yeah. that's, it's such a map where you have such a like you don't need to necessarily just focus on dps you can play like crowd control and more of like an yeah. area style so like i said maybe see some lucio try to get some boobs off the map a lot of hamster ball a lot of knockback is like a lot more valuable than just traditional
personal like yeah. hit scan or other like strategies. And Ro Roadhog to really really that ulti yeah oh map. that ultimate yeah could be really huge and Fire Mercy as well could be a possibility. Yep. So I like Ilios because it gives us so much more possibility on what people want to play, what style they want to go for, and I think Saint Clair. Uh, I mean I don't think necessarily like I said I think Apostle playing that Reinhardt I think is a really the difference maker. I think Roadhog isn't necessarily their strongest pick, but on Ilios you kind of. You don't, aren't forced into it, but you have definitely a possibility of if you can find those off map plays, it can totally change team fights and totally change how you approach uh, the points. Yeah, and especially with the charge on Reinhardt, you have to be a lot more careful playing him on a map like yeah. Ilios because you, you have to say you're, you're, you can get booped by Lucio or the Roadhog and everybody else, but using that charge can put you in a lot of dangerous positions yeah, if you angle it wrong. Definitely. So that's another thing. Those those more stationary mobile tanks, I say you're gonna have a lot more struggle trying to get across the map and everything and worry about like falling off the map and everything. But say Saint Clair, hopefully they come out with some good adjustments because they're gonna. Have to come out hot today yeah so we are just waiting a little bit for these players to get into lobby and get started up but i mean looking forward it is the final week for st Clair. you said they are they are three and three so they're on the precipice of trying to make playoffs but i mean at a four and four record you're still going to have a lot of tiebreakers to go through and i think mm -hmm. you know you you kind of want to put fate in your own hands right that's yeah. your goal here in the final week is to get two wins and almost basically guarantee yourself a spot in the playoffs because you know i think after a really good start, you started off 2-0 their second week. They went 0-2, and I mean, honestly, both games that second week were not Rough. good. They were Rough. they were looked really <laughs> ugly. And last week, middling results. They went one and one. So now you're stuck in that you know middle of the pack position. You want to try and you know stand yourself out. And not only is getting yourself a five and three record going to make you feel better, but going down to four and four, even if you do make playoffs, it means you're going to have to play against one of those really tough opponents that you lost against in week two. Yeah. So, so not only do you want to play for like the seeding and to get into higher, but let's say you want to leave nothing to chance. You don't want to leave anything to the other teams because there's a, the level of competition is pretty solid for the Overwatch Collegiate Definitely. Championship. You don't you don't want to leave anything to chance, like we said. So four and four, I would assume they would need a lot of things to break their way. I don't think they would get it done. So you definitely want to come away with a five three. So uh, hopefully we see what kind of strategies and compositions come out. But yeah, should be a really really close match between St. Clair and both teams today. I think two key is finding this first series because I feel like St. Clair very momentum based. Yeah. I feel like if they're able to find a victory, like we saw in week one, they are able to turn it into the second one. I think uh, if they they feel very demoralized, I feel like if they end up up, uh, you know, faltering at some point. Mm -hmm. I feel like on a lot of these maps, too, they kind of hit these points. Uh, I mean, obviously, on each one, each was unique, especially like the Escort and the Hybrid. There are specific points on a map that are more difficult to take, but I feel like St. Clair kind of gets stuck in some rut sometimes yep. on even just like portions of the map that aren't hard to take. I feel like they kind of struggle, and once they start, you know, falling apart, once someone, you know, is being focused by the other team, I feel like that's really where they start to struggle in their cohesiveness and their communication. So I want to see uh, especially, like I said, the support step up here, try and get the team together because they are kind of that backline leadership yeah. that you'd expect. Like I said, exactly. St. Clair is a team that when they get out ahead, they start to snowball on people. But when the opposite happens, when they have two or three frontline pushes that kind of get rejected or shut down in totality, you start to see they kind of start to doubt themselves. The doubt starts to creep in. They start to kind of half push things or they're not sure exactly what they want to do, even though they know what they have to do, especially like you said, certain maps where the spawn camping isn't necessarily like that dangerous and they still just seem like petrified to push because they've been yeah. punished so many times and they just seem like, all right, we just don't have the... Because a couple games, too, we saw, like, they just didn't change their composition for, like, maybe they just really wanted to stick in their ways yeah. and try something, but... So they have to be willing to adjust to If things don't start out well, you have to be able to adjust on the fly, especially Overwatch. You have the ability to change mid-game mid and everything, so yeah. don't just lock into the same six heroes. You have a whole variety, the whole roster to, to tap into if you need to, so pick the map, pick the location, and try to pick the comp accordingly to give yourself the best chance to start out hot. Totally agree with you on that one. And I, and I want to talk, too, about... This switch that we saw through from fall semester to the winter semester with Cheesy going toward the tank position and GCL's moving over to the DPS, mm -hmm. right? And I think overall, it's been very interesting, right? I think yeah. across both semesters, you can look at it. St. Clair, you know, not any amazing, significant results that we've seen. They haven't really had any good deep playoff runs throughout any of the leagues. But I think looking at this one, it has been kind of a learning curve for both of them watching them on tank duty. I feel like it definitely on tank duty for Cheesy and DPS duty. It's definitely been them trying to get used to it, especially because I feel like G scales when we see him play like these more uh, hit scan heavy uh, DPS, it, he feels very strong on it. But I feel like a lot of the other ones that he's playing, he doesn't necessarily feel like it, he doesn't look as consistent on them. So yeah, it's very interesting because Bailable likes to take, I mean, other than the junk route we've seen him, pop yeah. off, he likes to take a lot of those hit scans. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see how they work that into the ecosystem of the team. Yeah, it looks like we're finally getting into map one here. So we'll see exactly, like you said, what kind of composition or what kind of strategies come out from the side of St. Clair and Allegheny. Like you said, switching from the tank to the DPS was definitely a huge move. G Skills has done a pretty 
good job of transitioning so far. So we'll have to see what they decide to go with here. It looks like it will be Diva, Winston, Reaper, uh, Lucio, Doomfist, and Moira for the side of St. Clair. And Allegheny going to go Tracer, Ana, Diva, uh, it's like Genji, Zenyatta, and Winston on their side. So a lot of that knockback, like we said, a lot of that dive comp, a lot of uh, crowd control and get people out of that first sight. Very, very different ideas on how they want to execute it, though. It is very similar. They both are going for this very dive heavy, but... A lot of unique heroes on both sides. The Diva going to mm -hmm. be the only one saying the same. So both a similar idea, but both going at it very, very different ways. Yeah, like we said, a little bit more crowd control for one side, a little, little more DPS uh, hit scan for the other. Bale, we're going to get the early pickup. St. Clair Apostle, the double kill picking up. St. Clair going to drop four immediately on the side of Allegheny. Going to get a really strong pusher. Five will go down. Diva will get DMX, will get taken out as well. Only Tracer stands for Allegheny. And St. Clair, what a start for them. Holy. A big double kill on the leap there. And it just seemed like there wasn't anything that Allegheny could answer them back with. Look, we already got some swaps coming through here. Going to go towards the Mercy as well as Zaris going for the Reaper there. So a Farah Mercy coming in. And I mean, obviously, I think this is a really good choice here by Allegheny. They instantly saw it is going to be the Reaper as well as the Doomfist. So you don't really have anyone to contest that far right now. And you see reaping the rewards of that already. Chalen taking down Jubal early on here. Lucio going down. St. Clair up to 20%. Apostle going to get one back as well. So an answer. But right now the res coming through as well. Changing. Going to be in a bad spot. Is going to D-Mech one though. And that will be some momentum coming back towards Allegheny. Yeah, that far Mercy combo is far too devastating on Ilios. If you're the side of St. Clair, you have to get out that hit skin and you have to address that as soon as possible because being able to take out the supports from the top down and just be in, to stay safe out of every single gunfight is absolutely massive for the side of Allegheny. And so far, decent pushback on the point. They, they're trying to capture St. Clair with a slow contest. A couple have fallen for the side of St. Clair. Apostle will fall to, Z to Zazers and Allegheny will take this point back at 46% and begin to swing some points their way. Yeah, pretty good job by them. St. Clair actually use the coalescence from Moira there. Artjunk just going to want to swap over to the Ana so they have some kind of hit scan so they can start to try and deal with this Far Mercy. We see G Scales is available and available. Both going to have their alts up very soon so they want to try and use those before they end up swapping over towards a hit scan. So they want to try and make this push happen. St. Clair does get half the point there. Chalen going to find Artjunk but is going to get stunned up. G Scales going to trade back on Azera so it will be 2v2. Isaac trying to find the res here but will go down to Bailable. G Scales going to find Ailish as well and St. Clair Gonna be able to retake this point in just a second. Yeah, really good use of the, I think the Doomfist ulti, the Primal Rage came through there. Available, still has the Death Blossom online for maybe that second push here. Yuba will get killed by the Primal Apostle. g scales will trade out a couple. So St. Clair, a little bit last second push there by Allegheny. Available does hold on to the Death Blossom for the next possible push, but St. Clair just does a really good job of combining two to three ultimates, swarming Allegheny on the site and just clearing it out. But now Allegheny got a bunch of ultimates on their side as well. So St. Clair's gonna have to prepare for a strong push here. I'm kind of surprised actually. G-Skills not, did not opt to go towards a hit scan after using that ult, he has decided to stay on this Doomfist for now. Has built himself back up to 26%. But yeah, you said the key is available. Does have the ult. Nano going to come through here on a chain here, trying to find anything he can, but there is nobody there for Ooh. him to hit. So will be a wasted Nano there. Apostle GC is going to dive the back line. In the meanwhile, we'll find two picks of their own. Apostle going to get traded out, though, by Taco Hater. It will be St. Clair still holding on to this lead here, up to 90%. And with Bailable's Death Blossom still active here, it's going to be tough for Allegheny to push through here. Isaac and Zeris with also their own as well to try and contest. They have to get on this point soon. Yeah, St. Clair just has to try to hold this front line as long as possible and bait them into that Death Blossom. That Death Blossom is going, and they had the self-destruct as well. So those are two ultimates that are perfect, just perfectly designed for this site and to control it. So as long as they're able to maybe get one or two picks here, possibly take out a support. And I'd see Death Blossom will be available. Tries to pick up a couple. Will pick, or Yuba will get taken out by, will get taken out, uh, two get taken out for the side of St. Clair. Rez will come through on Mr. Dab, so Mercy gets the Rez. Cheesy will get some utility taken out. St. Clair, a couple ultimates come through, but they're still holding sight here. Overtime point will be contested. Allegheny clearing out St. Clair, though, on the site, so able to withstand the Death Blossom and a litany of other things and push through. Yeah, key there was, though, the fact that they had to use both the Mercy as well as Zara's Death Blossom to clear St. Clair off point. And now you see both Cheesy, or sorry, Apostle and Yubel coming up there all soon. GCL is almost at his as well. We'll get a swap over from Bailable onto the Soldier and instantly going to take out that Chalgen. Rez going to come through. No, it's actually going to get cancelled here. So now St. Clair, with a man advantage, is going to try and push onto this point. GCL is going to use that Meteor immediately Huge. after taking out Isaac. And we'll be able to pop down onto point here. St. Clair with a two-person advantage right now on site. Going to try and force this one through. There will be a couple of people here all for Allegheny on point. Wrecking Ball all can come through as well. Apostle going to find Mr. Dab with that self destruct on point, but it's not going to matter. Our junk finding Chelgen going to find Eilish as well. It will be able to retake this point and will be able to take point number one and map number one 
on this Ilios. That was exactly the kind of adjustment that we needed St. Clair to make. As soon as Bale, Bale swaps onto the Soldier and they swap out for more of a hit scan and a dive style, Apostle's able to, cr to crash the site, get the ultimate on. Bailable immediately takes out Chaljin and then G-Scales immediately takes out the Mercy. The two kills they had to get, they got at the exact perfect time because they made the right adjustment when they had to. That Soldier switch was key to ending that round, I think. Yeah, I think too, the fact that they're getting these picks before they're actually using their ultimate. So not only do they find something and they, they also get an ultimate on top of that to try and clear out anybody from trading, really key for them finding that victory. Now, map number two, St. Clair with a 1-0 advantage here in maps looking to try and finish it off here. In two, we are on well, and we were talking about this map specifically earlier. We could see a lot of different things. Maybe the Roadhog. Oh, actually, we're Ooh. gonna get a pause here. So uh, we're gonna see, so well, Definitely going to be an interesting one here. I think the fact that you can't go for Roadhog. We already seen Lucio yep. on that map number one, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Lucio as well. And, and we're back. We're going to get into it. <laughs> so Far Mercy going to be coming out here for Allegheny again here. They're going to get Zaris on the on the Cassidy here instead of the Reaper. So a little bit of a change as well as Taco Hater on the Sigma instead of the uh, Diva. Yeah, so this is an extremely hard point to push when you have that far. This is, a, this is definitely available. Going to be playing on the Tracer. I would G scales on the on the Cassie. I think that will probably be to address Chaljin on the fair because this guy has been an absolute menace when he hasn't been addressed. And this is especially this is such an open point in the middle where this is like you're going to have to address that sooner than later, and you don't want to leave it to the front line to have to try to dive through everything. G scales barely going to escape there with his life, but will be able to sneak Ooh. away. Zara's going to find G scales with a headshot though. He couldn't run too far. One going to be bailable on the back line here, just trying to be annoying. Nobody can get point just yet. They're still trying to hold on to it, but some progress will be made here, and Allegheny going to start it up here. We'll be able to get that one as well as a few picks on the St. Clair, and they will be pushed back here to start us off. No ults through just yet for anybody, though. Yeah, a, lot, a little more percentage Actually, on the side of Allegheny. Yeah, the Cassidy ult is online. Yeah. The Deadeye is there if needed. Allegheny a little bit higher in the percentage, but St. Clair didn't really get completely folded on that push. Just had a couple picks go down early and didn't really fully commit to another push. Just kind of said, we're going to regroup, get the six stack and try this again. Because this is a site where if you send two, three people repeatedly, you can, like, you'll get rolled out of here really, really quickly if you don't have a full team push. Fossil looking for the flank here. Sees the Orisa setup, is going to pull himself through four members there. Will pop the Wrecking Ball up, but it's not anywhere near the team there. So we'll be a little bit... Oh, he has it actually. He's going to go for the flank here. Going to go for the slam alt combo. Can he find multiple people? Going to pop that one up. Is he going to get any kills with it? No, it's actually going to be stopped by the Immortality Fields. Was Zenyatta ult, but Yubel and Cheesy going to find kills of their own. Cheesy finding Isaac as well. And St. Clair going to be able to clear them off point here and start getting some progress of their own. Yeah, and that's the beautiful thing about Apostle on the Wrecking Ball. Even when the ultimate doesn't necessarily hit as strong as he would have liked, he pretty much made four players from Allegheny address what he was doing and like try to get, like, stop him from diving that back line. So just being able to use that distraction and that mobility to set up the rest of your team, like we said, you, Bull, and G-Scales, and everybody else to walk up behind and just start laying insane damage, that's exactly the kind of space you need to create if you're St. Clair moving forward. 22% so far on this point. Cheesy looking to try and get the self-destruct come through. It is the only ult that could be up soon. St. Clair has a lot available in a second, but so does Allegheny. Deadeye going to be popped here for Zaris. Can he find anybody with this one? No, he can't find that kill. g is going to get Chalgen as well. Mercy not going to be able to help that far out just now. Deadeye for St. Clair going to be popped here, but also not going to find anything. Both Cassidy's not going to get anything with those ultimates, but they will be able to clear up point for just a second. St. Clair still retaining progress here, and they will be able to clear the rest of Allegheny out, and that push will be stifled in its tracks. St. Clair will be able to push them off point. Yeah, great job by St. Clair to wipe everybody out before Chaljan could get back with that fair, because once he gets back, then two or three people are probably putting their eyes to the sky, and you won't be able to focus everybody else on the ground quite as well. So St. Clair doing an excellent job there of six stacking, taking everybody out one by one, making sure everybody's all good. And I think we've seen a lot better game. Like you said, the support has been backlining and maintaining the fights a lot better this game. They're not getting picked as early, and it helps you sustain team fights a lot longer when your support stays alive. I like the choice here, too. The fact that they have the Zenyatta. Transcendence will be popped here. This will be a couple of pop directly. I'm going to go for that one again. GCL's going to find Mr. Dab there in the back. Zara's going to trade back on our junk, though. Cheesy going to take down the Immortality Field, trying to find some more here. Fossil being such a big nuisance on yeah. this ball, but oh, is he going to escape? Just barely. No. Alice going to take him down before he can get up, but St. Clair has already claimed 92% of this point. They will be able to get it to 99 here before they will give it up, most likely. GCL's actually going to find two picks of his own. He's not going to want to go down just yet. Self-destruct going to be used on point here, trying to clear him out over time. Oh, Cheesy finds two with a self-destruct there. No one going to be left on the point, just Cheesy. Actually, he's going to get taken out here 
Answering response somehow. Allegheny still holding on to this point for the moment. Bailable going to clear the rest of them off, and that's going to be St. Clair claiming the overtime and claiming Elios here going up 1 0 in this series. Absolutely incredible work by Apostle and the supports for St. Clair. They're just clearing out space and making it so Allegheny could never really group up. Once they shut that Farah off, they were able to just focus everyone on the ground level, and they did such an excellent job of just focusing who they needed to and clearing everybody out. Yeah, really good job for St. Clair. They're able to know exactly what. Allegheny were going for, able to shut it down there, especially that second map, played it really, really well. G-Scales finding oh. three with that play of the game. And, you know, really good job by St. Clair, really good adaptation. The fact that you started off with two dive comps, and as soon as Allegheny lost the first one, they're like, okay, swap over to the Fire yeah. Mercy, go for that. St. Clair, they were kind of holding on to that Reaper and Doomfist combo because they wanted to get those alts off. Yeah. Once they did that, they were able to get a decent amount of percentage, and they're like, okay, Available, swaps off to the soldier. They instantly take care of the yeah. Farah. I think that was a key thing too, was the fact that Mercy wasn't sticking with the Farah. She was kind of going back towards the team. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason for that was actually a really smart move by Arjunk. The fact that he went to the Zenyatta meant that you can't just have one healer or else they're, everyone, from the, especially the tanks, are going to get melted yeah. by that Discord orb from the Zenyatta. So you have to have Mercy going back to the team sometimes. And it meant that the Faro was kind of exposed up in mid-air. Yeah, and that's, say, that's a great, what you said, St. Clair, they needed to make adjustments, so those are two massive adjustments, like you mm -hmm. said. Using the Zenyatta to get those Discord and everything on the ground, to take care of everything on the ground level, and then you had uh, Bailable immediately, he's like, a 1v1 soldier Farah, I'm going to trust Bailable to win those yeah, more times than so. not, especially considering Farah just has that area of it, like the explosive area of effect, so Bailable with a great switch on the soldier, St. Clair made the adjustments they need, they take map one against Allegheny, and they look strong. We are going to be going to Saints Row here in map number two. Something St. Clair very comfortable with, very familiar with. Something they have had really good success on throughout the Overwatch Collegiate Championship. I think definitely a comfort map for them. And it'll be interesting to see what they go for. I think it, pretty standard compared to other maps on what your choice is. You start off obviously with the Maywall coming through. And then after that first push, you swap over. You, you can flex a little bit. But you do see a lot of traders here. You do see a lot of... You can see a lot of Zarya as well, which yeah. makes things very interesting. I think that is something that St. Clair hasn't had the best Zarya play, I don't mm -hmm. think, compared to some of the other teams they played against. So I think that is something that we need to look for here because having good Zarya play is so key to going from a good team to a great team. Yeah, having that gravity and using that bubble on the right people at the right time, it's just, especially on King's Row, like having that gravity, there's so many areas and choke points where it's just such a strong, it's such a strong ability and you can pretty much pull everybody off of a site or a payload and then you can set up either one available sticky bombs or something else and it looks like may have had a lobby crash or something. So unfortunately- I think, they, I think that St. Clair wants to go towards the other side. They ah. are gonna be starting on attack or defense, whatever they were yeah. not on there. So um, that does mean that it is Allegheny's map choice, if I am correct about that one. So it's interesting to see that they're going towards this map because St. Clair is so comfortable with it. I'm sure they're feeling pretty good about the yeah. map choice. Yeah, so I'm sure Allegheny, everyone in this league, with they all have similar records, right? So I have yeah. to imagine, even though St. Clair might be really comfortable on this map, that ever, say King's Row is a pretty standard map. Yeah. You're going to play it a lot in scrims and other tournaments. So it's a map that I'm sure every team is pretty familiar with, but definitely a strong map for St. Clair. But if I'm Allegheny, right, with their record, I can't, I can't really fault them for making any map choices. Yeah, I definitely think both teams are very comfortable on it. And it, I mean, it's been a stock standard map throughout all of Overwatch's yeah. history. So, uh, and before we get into this game too much, I want to talk about the fact that Overwatch 2, big announcement Oof. came out this week. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it affects the future of Overwatch esports as a whole. 5v5 is definitely an interesting pivot, especially I was, you know, I played tank myself. So having another tank removed, and it's going to be a lot different of yeah. a play style. So these poor players are going to have to make such huge adjustments in the coming months. But hopefully that's a, that's a lot. 5v5 is so different for this it's, game. I was going to say, they need gonna a pick and ban system, I think, it's too. It's going to be very interesting yeah. how they play it out, especially like not just in the Overwatch League, but in the collegiate level as well, because people love this game so much. So. Going to Overwatch 2 is going to be interesting, especially with the new game mode and push. Yep. Be it make things even more interesting. But back to the action here. Five seconds to go before this one starts up. St. Clair with a 1-0 lead in this series. Looking to close it up here in two on the hybrid. Yeah, St. Clair going to get a pretty standard push here. Apostle going to get that Reinhardt. Probably try to charge the front line, get some fire strikes in, try to get some ultimate build up. Attempt to finally land that shatter. Cheesy and G-Scale is going to be sitting on that second level trying to shoot down. Widow will get the shot on G-Scale. Probably, I think it was a headshot as well. Ooh. We'll take out Cheesy as well. So double headshots for Chaljin to start off. So St. Clair getting two people dropped immediately by some great shooting from Chaljin. He is going to find another shot here on the side. Won't quite take out the capacity just yet, but St. Clair 
routed off this point. They will be giving up. Vale will try to sneak in behind Seer. You see if he can get a good flank, but going to be walled off by May for the moment, and that is going to be Allegheny already finding point number one here and will start the escort portion of the map. St. Clair going to be pushing forward, trying to challenge them here. They do have available on the flank, and he will be able to do a lot of damage here. Arjunk finding Isaac as well. So they will be stopping this push just before it can get started. But, I mean, for Allegheny, you are going to be starting here. But now this is tough because this is a yep. really good spawn trap for St. Clair to try and hold. Yeah, that was a huge way for St. Clair to bounce back. Because they usually you see that Widow just try to get some, like, poke damage almost and just try to, like, scare people off but to get two picks like that that quickly definitely realized like Allegheny was able to make a way faster push than they probably expected as well so St. Clair really good job to bounce back here and try to hold up Shatter will come through the wall will go up to block it though so then Apostle with the Shatter of his own looks like that will knock over a couple St. Clair cleaning up the side of Allegheny couple kills coming through Challenge will trade out G scales but St. Clair with a great job of putting up that May wall and counter counter shattering to knock Allegheny back down the stairs Taco Hater tried to go for a big Shatter hit absolutely nothing Apostle went for a bigger shatter and hit absolutely everybody. <laughs> and that is what he's known for is for these big shatters. And St. Clair holding this spawn trap steady. And this is a really tough one to get out of, right? Because you have to push forward just like they are. Try and speed run it. Try and get past them here. A nice Maywall is going to allow them to get towards that point. And now St. Clair in a tough position. Deadeye going to come through, through the window. Not going to catch anyone with it, though. We'll just put some damage down. And we're Tyler Field even taken down. Cheesy going to find one already. The Baptiste going down early. Mr. Dab going to get one back. But Apostle... Going to find that another one, and that's going to be both tanks down. They are going to be able to push this Ooh. one through the archway, but it doesn't matter. St. Clair going to be able to clean up the rest of them, and again, they are going to push forward here. But the important thing is they got out of the spawn trap. Yeah, St. Clair did a fantastic job there of shoving them from the front, and then G-Scales did a great job of going behind with that dynamite and that rifle and just popping off and doing a ton of damage to make sure St. Clair was going to win that team fight because Allegheny had a couple good moments there, but St. Clair, like we said, every time they seem to bounce back extremely, extremely well, and they seem to hold the area quite well. Chaljin looking to try and build up the Dragon Blade here. Mr. Dab going to pop the grab early, actually. here, going to try and find a lot from St. Clair, but they're not going to get anything from it. They will get a couple picks over, but St. Clair going to be able to answer back here. Bailable going to find one. Shatter going to come through, but it doesn't matter. Apostle going to find one for himself. Bailable going to get Mr. Dab, and they will be able to clean up these streets in just a second. As soon as this May goes down, they will be able to get it. And St. Clair with a good answer back on the team fight. But now Allegheny with the alt advantage. With Chaljin finding the Dragon Blade, this could go huge. Because St. Clair, I, they do have the Baptiste window, but... They get rid of that immortality field. It's going to be really tough for them to try and defend against that Dragon Blade. I will say, Allegheny burning that gravity as early as he did might have actually made the Dragon not as viable as, as a play yeah. right now. Because if they had saved that gravity another 20 seconds and combined it with the Dragon Strike, they might have had a lot more success against St. Clair. But nonetheless, it will come through and pick up G-Skills. A couple of trades coming through. Arjun will trade out. Apostle will go down to Alish. So St. Clair still trying to hold on here after the ultimate. Alish will pick up two. Available will fall. St. Clair looks like they're getting pushed back pretty strong. Alice will pick up three and get another one. So great push by Allegheny just driving St. Clair back and moving his payload. The DPS Lucio coming yeah. through there. Alish finding three in that fight. And they will be able to push this one forward through the streets. St. Clair, a pretty decent defense on streets here. Typically, uh, you really see teams, especially after finding the first point so early, they able to just rush through streets and get towards this third phase very early. But St. Clair able to solve for about two minutes there. Very valuable time wasted. And now there is going to be a Deadeye coming through from both sides. Will it find anybody available? Going to find Taco Hater. The Reinar going down early on. They have the shield already coming down. There's going to be an ult coming through as well on the other side, but not going to be able to find anything with that. And St. Clair able to stop them for the moment and push Allegheny back yet again. Yeah, and you can see how huge that Deadeye was for available to hit on the Reiner because immediately Apostle knows there's no one to challenge me. I'm going to run forward, and just, just like this, they're able to immediately drive Allegheny back because besides the Reinhardt, Zarya has a, a decent frontline tank, but nowhere near what you need out of a Reinhardt. So Apostle knew that, took the charge, immediately runs down Allegheny, and now St. Clair backing them up farther and farther down the street. Like you said, just delay that time as much as possible because this third stretch is extremely difficult to take. So the longer you bleed this clock on the side of St. Clair, you're going to have a lot higher chance of winning. A minute 46 remaining here. Only about 10 meters to go for Allegheny, but it is a long 10 meters you have to try and find here. Alt's coming up here very soon. Taco Hater with the Shatter. Cheesy with the grab. Is going to try and see if he can catch anyone with it. That one there. Grabbing him. Is he going to be able to pick up somebody here? Picks up the Reinhardt. Is going to slam him down. Shatter going to come through as well. Mr. Dab going to find Yubel. The first pick going towards Allegheny here. Cheesy going to answer back with one onto Isaac. Isaac down again early on here. This Baptiste just not able to survive what St. Clair is throwing at him. Will be St. Clair trying to push them back here, but no other picks coming through. Fighting still going on. A minute left here. Allegheny going to opt to back off here. Wait for that member to come back in. Isaac going to try and catch up to his team, but 
Time's going to be a, a real problem for Allegheny now. Yeah, and St. Clair has been actively pushing this point farther and farther back, it would seem. So even though the time is ticking as well, the distance... Oh. Great shot by g Skills to get that fadeaway headshot on Chowjin. That's exactly the kind of kill you want after St. Clair dropping Baptiste and Cassidy immediately. And now St. Clair can do what they love, which is to push hard as hell. Apostle running down the front line. Cheesy running down as well. Able to push Allegheny back. And Allegheny almost back to the spawn point of this map at this point. They've been pushed all the way back through streets past the third point and all the way back to near where they started. There is a lot of ultimates available here now, though. St. Clair will have six online oh. during this fight. Allegheny will have five. Ch Challenges will be up very soon, but they're not going to have the shadow from Taco Hater, so that is going to be the difference. An early alt, both Cassidy's going to pop it here. Can they find anything with them, though? Yes, Bailable again going to find one on a challenge in here. I6, Immortality Field going to go down immediately. Alts popped all across the map. It's just pandemonium out here. They're going to try and pop onto this point, create the overtime picks going through for both sides. Cheesy going to find one onto Isaac as well. It's going to be St. Clair with a small advantage here in this fight, but Mr. Daz fully charged beam going to be doing so much damage. Overtime still alive here. It wouldn't be a one on site here, but Ailish and Zara is going, being taken down here. This might be St. Clair closing off this map and uh, giving themselves an opportunity to win here on attack. Yes, it will be. Yeah, Ailish was, Ailish was flying around that payload as Lucio, trying to keep the round alive as long as possible. St. Clair eventually caught on to it and focused him, and what a push by St. Clair. That last two to three minutes of that game was absolute domination. Just They were able to eat every ultimate that Allegheny had for them, send their zone back their own way with double the effectiveness. Bailable hits a couple massive dead eyes to give St. Clair just, the, just enough space to get by there and win those team fights. I think the thing for me now is... Allegheny has a really, really tall task ahead of them, right? Because I think taking this point is pretty easy. Mm -hmm. I think as long as you can get past that archway, yep. that is basically a guaranteed win, right? Because pushing this through the streets, pretty simple to do. And I mean, St. Clair, you don't even have to get it to that second point. You just have to get it somewhere near the end of that stretch and definitely doable for them. I, I think it's going to be really tough for me to see Allegheny win this one. I, I think... The thing for me this game, I feel like Isaac has just been getting taken so so early in yep. these fights. And when your Baptiste goes down early, it makes it so much harder because you're entirely relying on a Lucio who doesn't really heal that much for the entire for your healing for your entire team. So St. Clair a really good job targeting that Baptiste, getting him out of the fights early, and it's making a huge difference in how these team fights play out. Yeah, and when I stick and talk are the ones that are doing like a majority of the healing and trying to like push the point as much as possible. Ailish has been the one to kind of hang around the payload and try mm -hmm. to play like the, the stall game. So yeah, if you take out that Baptiste and that Reinhardt early on, then Lucio has to try to overcompensate way too much. And the way Ailish was playing and like the way they were using him to set up on the payload, it's just not I don't think it's really keen on what they want to do. So St. Clair with a couple of changes coming through on the hero side, Bailable gonna go with the Reaper here. So gonna get a really strong push onto the side here. Sinclair gonna try to walk them off immediately. Damage will come through for both sides. Sinclair with a pretty good push to back them up into the archway. You will pick up the kill on Taco. So Ryan will go down. Both tanks down for the side of Allegheny. So Sinclair should be able to make oh, a push he's here. Already at 100. Great. Huge damage. Ulti already charged. Cheesy picking up two kills. G Scales will pick up one. Apostle will grab one. G Scales another. And Sinclair easily taking point one. Yeah, I think this this is gonna be really tough now because. They already have a hundred charge for Cheesy's beam there. It's going to be doing so much damage in these fights moving forward. And it's going to be really tough because Mr. Dab is going to be starting there at zero. So mm -hmm. they have to try and find an They have to take down the Zarya. But with these alt charges already very, very high, you see Arjunk already with the Coalescence available. Apostle almost with the Shatter as well. It's going to be tough. They have to try and find a good way to defend this one. St. Clair just going to try and walk forward. Just going to try and push them through here. Arjunk finding two with the Coalescence as well as Apostle and be able to find a pick to their own. Now just the Fire of Mercy flying through the skies trying to do anything here. But no, they will be taken down. And St. Clair going to push this cart forward. Going to pick up a team kill. And now trying to find this final game and, and trying to find the series win. Yeah, just one more massive team fight could probably get you the push, but what a coalescence by our junk. Just absolutely shredding the immortality field and shredding all of Allegheny and just the rest of the Saints easily there to pick up the pieces. So just one or two more strong pushes. They will have a couple ultimates online. So will Allegheny though. So that's a oh, huge shatter, shatter for Apostle. Takes out three or four at least with the shatter. Dragons come through for Allegheny to try to counter, but drop bodies are still falling for Allegheny. St. Clair will clear this point. Cheesy picks up Zazers, dab off the map, and St. Clair easily rolling this payload that we got to name that spot because apostle shatters from there have just been deadly to oh, every insane. opponent in the overwatch League. he's going to take a knee a well-deserved knee on that point and that is going to be st Clair taking this series in 2-0 fashion absolutely 
beautiful stuff and they will be going up to four and three now in the overwatch collegiate championship and this is exactly it's literally the two things we said they had to do better keep the support alive and supply the tanks and look what happens you get huge coalescences you get massive plays from the support and then you just have apostle absolutely critical huge shatters at every time that st Clair needed look at this absolutely shredding the defense of Alleg allegheny to end this game for st Clair, just taking apart everything that they had and walking him down and winning the game just really really good stuff and like you said that's things they wanted to see them do big shatters from apostle stepping up in the moments where he needed to and the support play from st Clair getting elevated and upgraded and specifically the fact that he's playing Moira at such a good level yeah. and i talked about him really really good baptiste play throughout all of this uh overwatch League championship but specifically now the moira looked really really good both maps that he played it here and looking forward i think that two o'clock game is is looking good for them and we said they're a very momentum based yeah. team so the fact that they found this first win in pretty dominant fashion mm -hmm. i'd say I think that bodes really well for the second series. And they adjusted extremely well. The Far Mercy gave him a lot of trouble. They made the adjustment on map one on Ilios. They saw a, a, not really too many struggles on Kingsha, but anytime they kind of got stuck, they, we did see a couple hero swaps this time. So they definitely weren't locked into the same comps they were before, which is great to see because they made changes and they immediately paid off, especially on Ilios. Apostle goes on the hamster ball and Bailable goes on the soldier and the game completely changes. Yeah, definitely St. Clair looking really, really good here in our first series. Don't go anywhere. We are going to have another one at 2 o'clock. So I'll just be a brief intermission. I don't know if we'll be stream ending or if we'll continue the stream for a little bit. We're continuing. So we'll be back. Uh, go get yourself a drink, some food. Get ready for some more Overwatch action. St. Clair now sitting at 4-3, and three, trying to find that 5-3 and three record, trying to guarantee themselves a, a shot at the playoffs. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with some more Overwatch action.